I went into the Marine Corps with 15 cents. I came out here to California with 15 cents and a meatball sandwich. <laughs> Serious. From Brooklyn? In a brown paper bag. Uh -huh. My mom said, what do you want to eat? I said, make me a meatball sandwich, mom. I left on a Monday. We had meatballs for Sunday. And you got to, uh, where where'd they I train went you? to One Hall Street. Where was that? One Hall Street. Where's that? Brooklyn, Brook, Brook, New York. Oh, New York, huh? And when I got there, I went into this room, and this guy came in. He said, hey, who wants to go into the Marines? I said, Marines? He said, yeah, Marines. I said, yeah, my brother's in the Marines. I'll go. So I said, I'll be with my brother Tony. Said, All right, get up. So they got me up. Get on that bus. Boom. Where they out of here, man? <laughs> Where they train you? Paris Island, South okay. Carolina, North yeah. Carolina. So you'd gotten drafted, and you chose the Marines, and off. Chose the Marines, and I went to Paris Island on a bus. Wow. And they even took my meatball sandwich away from me. <laughs> the man, suckers. My wallet, my meatball sandwich. Everything. I was like, so, everything. You know, I I haven't been in the military. I don't know what it's like. My dad. Flew B 17s in World War II. So I, I know a little bit. It was bit about a trippy it. thing, man. So I don't know. What, what, what was I it? I had no idea about Marines. Yeah, well, Marines. What's the Marine? I mean, it's the military, you know? I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew my brother was there. That if he was there, then if he could handle it, I could handle it. My kid brother? Yeah. He's younger than me, too. Yeah. So I got off the bus, and it, I was kind of tired from the ride, you know, because it's a pretty long ride. And this guy pushed me, and I woke up. And I went, you fuck, who the fuck? And I tripped him, and I got him on the ground, and I jumped on him. He push, pushed you out of the bus or something? Or yeah, what? he pushed yeah. me out of the bus, and I jumped on him. Uh -huh. and, I said, and I was ready to wail on him, and they pulled me off of him. And, and they said, man, you can't hit a drill instructor. I said, I would blow block and he hit me. He went, that's why you're here, to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're here, to get hit. Shit, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, so, what happened after so that? They put I mean, me in military jail for, I did they? for about three weeks. Right from the get go, you were a troublemaker. Yeah. I picked up a big sledgehammer. They gave me a big sledgehammer and a pile of rock and a bucket. And they said, That's your pile, that's your bucket, and that's your spot. Put your rock over here. Everybody had a rock pile. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Busting the, rocks. Busting rocks with the hot heat the mosquitoes. So I, I, the first day I got there, I said, shit, hey, I'm Sicilian, you know, and I was born with a sledgehammer in my hand. So I'm looking, and I'm saying, shit, nobody's got any rock piles. This guy's, said, okay, I got to change this shit up. So I start, boom, 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 busting rock, and I start having a big rock pile. That's when my time started getting short over there in prison. <coughs> And then I start busting everything. Everything they told me to do, I busted better than they wanted me yeah. to do it. I busted. I busted my way out of prison. They got me out three weeks. I was out of there, back on track. But then the drill instructor took me as his houseboy. He's going to use me <laughs> as an example now. Of a good I was a wise guy. <laughs> yeah. He's going to use me as an example for the whole company. So every day I was an example. He's come. I have to open his door, shine his shoes, sweep his office, keep everything nice and clean, plus my own shit. And I, I to, when he came, I had to run open his door, stand there, attention. Close, he, he, no door, he couldn't touch a door. I was his houseboy. And then when I did something wrong, whoa, in the stomach, boom, Deliberty, give me a hundred push ups. Deliberty, give me another hundred of them. Deliberty, Deliberty. And I didn't realize what was going on, but he was using me as an example. So when it was all done, the day we were supposed to graduate, he said, Deliberti, front and center. Said, yeah, she's here. This is yours. I said, what's that? Fucking dress blues. I said, yeah, you get a stripe. Oh, yeah? So I, all that, all that, I was the only one that got the stripe out. Out of blue. And dress blues. Because I came out. That's right. Long. Interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. How'd you feel? I feel good about it. I, I feel that's what I deserved it. Yeah. I did everything better than everyone. We, we used to go on mine sweeps every mm -hmm. morning. We would have to walk like 10 city blocks. Yeah. And, and every morning, it was Diliberti. Take the, take the point with mine sweep. 
So I'd have to walk down this road and stick this bayonet every now and then into the ground to check to see if there's any landmines so that the tanks and the Antos and the patrols and the cars and the vehicles could all go down the road. So one morning we're going down the road and all of a sudden pop, 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 pop and we start getting ambushed. So I dive right with my rifle right into this rice paddy and uh -huh. hit the dirt. Over to be bing bing. I get out of the rice paddy and my rifle looks like I stuffed with mud. I'm all dirty. I'm loaded with mud. So we get back to the camp where I'm dug in. Night pipe, night time rolls around and I'm looking at my rifle. I said, you man, I got a I got a job on my hands. So the first thing in the early light, I get up and I go down to this, this river. That's a big raging river. But the water's flowing and I have a rubber lady, I call this an air mattress, and I bring that with me and I get undressed. And I take all my clothes and I throw it in the water and I'm rinsing them and I'm bringing them and I'm cleaning them and a little sunlight and, and I'm taking advantage of it and I'm sit, standing on my air mattress with my feet. I'm down to my skivvies, my underwear, yeah. and I'm cleaning shit and everything and I hear, help, help. I look out and these two guys are floating. I jump on my air mattress, boom, I start paddling out. I grab one guy and throw, I said, get on the air mattress. He said, don't hurt, he says, Flay out still in the water. I said, hang on. Boom, I start diving into this muddy, murky shit. <laughs> just flowing down. I don't yeah, yeah, trip. Yeah. Then the air mattress starts to get away from me and I start swimming to it. I said, shit, if I don't get to that air mattress, I don't know. Boom, it took me a long time. I swam to the air mattress. Boom, jumped on the air mattress. I said, hang on. And I start flipping it, flipping it towards the shore. And Finally, we got towards the shore, and I, we got on shore, and we just laid on shore. And about, I don't know how what happened was hours later, we, a patrol came, helicopters were in the air, patrol came and uh -huh. got us. That was that. That was the end of that, man. So, one guy died, though. Why, what happened? He drowned. I couldn't save him. I tried to find him. I couldn't find him. Again. They... They Give you a commendation for that, or I, they wanted to. Uh huh. I told them I didn't do that for that. Uh huh. They came to my camps, at my bunker. Uh huh. Really? I didn't do that for that. Yeah, that was, that was, so you put your life on. I said, well, what was I going to do? Let him drown? We started out in helicopters. We did. We did three, two assaults, two or three assaults from the boat. From the helicopters. First time I got, I got a big, big cut. And they sent me back to the ship. I didn't go on that one. No uh -huh. one got. They didn't encounter no enemy, but they did all get malaria. That was the first assault. Second one, we went in, and that's when they put me out on the front lines. And they sent me out, number one, down, down death row. The point, man. Death row. That's when everybody got wiped out. Except me. They sent me. To, they sent me to, out to get killed, and I just looked up and I prayed. And, and God said, "Listen, your father told you to hunt. He taught you to hunt. They told you. you they told you that it, the smaller target is the, is not is the difficult target. So it becomes small." Uh huh. Said, okay. <laughs> so instead of slowing up and staying in sight of them. Like they wanted me to, I ran away from them. Uh -huh. And I ran into the enemy lines. And as I was running, a torpedo went right over my head. And I jumped into the ditch. And it blew up. And another torpedo. And then pop, 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 pop. And then, and before you know it, there was napalm and thousand pound bombs. And there was everything coming. 52 B-52s and... For two days, man, it was it was a bomb. And then after it was done, I got out of that ditch and crawled out. That's when I caught a round in the shoulder. Someone shot me when I was carrying out two bodies. I caught a round right in the shoulder. I felt it and I got I had the bullet in my hand. And it stuck right in my belt suspender strap and really? my black jacket. Yeah. Didn't penetrate. I felt it though. I had it in I had the projectile in my hand. <clears throat> And then I dragged these two bodies out of there, and then we dragged all the bodies out of there. There was a lot of bodies that day there.